I, I kind of fell into acting a little bit. Um, my sister was doing a, a, da a dance drama class on a Saturday morning and I was obsessed with her and, and everything she did and um, and I uh, immediately wanted to do it because she was doing it. And also I used to put on these little kind of shows for, for mum and dad in, in the kitchen and, um, and I think they thought it would be good if I could go and be annoying somewhere else for um, two hours on a Saturday morning. Um, so that's how I started. I went to the class and I just absolutely fell in love with performing and and uh, subsequently got my first audition and, and, and did a, a short film as a result. And um, yeah, as soon as I was on set and everything, I just completely caught the, the bug and and I, I um, just absolutely loved it. So I guess how I started was that I was wanted to do what my sister was doing and why I continued was that I, I just completely fell in love and was drawn to uh, performing in a way that I hadn't been drawn to anything uh, before. I think I usually know within the first uh, few pages of a script whether or not it's something that I'd like to uh, be a part of. Um, I've been really lucky that I've gotten to work on uh, stories that I uh, feel strongly about and, and characters who I'm passionate about and, and really care for. and. Um, I think that what draws me to a character, um, uh, yeah, I think I think it's that. It's if, if I feel strongly about them, or if I um, really care about them, or they're passionate about their story. That's usually what what draws me to it, and I, I usually have a pretty good idea, yeah, within the first few pages. Um, but uh, but yeah, I've been really lucky to play a very diverse range of characters too. So um, and that's absolutely something I'm I'm interested in, and. Um, yeah, so it's a mixture of, of uh, the script and character, I guess. Yeah, so New Boy was nominated for an Oscar uh, when I was uh, 11, so that was maybe 2009. Um, and I had no concept of, of what that meant or, or what they were even. I don't think I had any idea what the Oscars were at that age, um, which is probably a good thing at that time because um, I think maybe my... Uh, 11 year old ego could have uh, grown a little bit if um, if I had any concept. So, I mean, really at the time, they were no more exciting than football training or a spelling test that was happening. So um, yeah, I had no concept. I think for my mum and dad, that was a lot more exciting for them than it was for me. Uh, and obviously it would be very different uh, now uh, if that were to, uh, to happen. One thing that I'm, I'm very grateful for is that I, I completely fell in love with acting as, as a child and um, my love for acting and performing and, and telling stories only grew as I, I got older. So um, I think it would be unfair to say that I'm more challenged now than before um, or I'm more challenged the further I get in my career um, based on the projects because it's not so much to do with the projects as opposed to the expectation I put on myself. So I'm so grateful for all the opportunity, uh, opportunities I've been given, um, but I think the older I got and, and the more I um, cared, I guess, about performing and uh, and kind of grew up and became a little bit more mature, and the more pressure I, I put on myself to, to do a good job. So, um, yeah, I would say in the last few years, I've I felt absolutely more challenged by the the, uh, the projects that I'm a part of, um, but that's also down to the pressure that I'm putting uh, on myself uh, too. That's a good question. I'm not sure it's necessarily more fun to play unlikable characters, but it's definitely a different challenge and and, and a, a very different um, kind of uh, mindset while on set, I think. Um, or maybe that was just for me. It's hard to talk about it generally. It's, it's kind of easier to talk job specific. And um, in normal people, playing Jamie was uh, was so much fun and I enjoyed it so much. Um, but that was also down to all the people around me and, and uh, you know, and uh, Daisy and Paul and India and all the cast and and, um, and Lenny and uh, Hetty and everyone else. It was, uh, so it, yeah, it, it was, I'd say, that's my only experience playing a really unlikable character and it was absolutely so much fun. Um, but that's also down to the, the people around me, I think. But um but no, I, I, I enjoyed every second of, of that opportunity and to do something um, so different was, um, yeah, absolutely a dream come true and a lot of fun too. 
when I read the script for Dating Amber, I immediately um, just fell in love with it. And I was laughing out loud and I was crying out loud. And it just spoke to me in, in a way that I think is really rare. You know, a lot of the time you read something and you're like, I'd love to do this. And then sometimes you read something and you feel like I need to do this. And I think there were so many things about it that were incredible. And, uh, you know, it was a, a queer story that was framed with hope and, and joy and optimism. And I think that's really important that uh, queer stories uh, are framed uh, with those things. And, um, and it was a really beautiful platonic love story. And um, yeah, I just knew straight away that I wanted to be a part of it. And then luckily um, they gave me the chance to, to do that. So, so we were really lucky. We had so much rehearsal time going in, which is, is, is very rare on, um, on any film, um, but uh, particularly on an independent film, it's, it's rare that you have that much rehearsal time. So it really gave Lola and I the opportunity to, um, to become best friends, because that's what the film uh, needed really is, is um, we always talk about Dave wanted to cast two people who could act like best friends, and then he ended up with two people um, who became best friends, which is, um, yeah, something I'm extremely grateful for. But we had lots of rehearsal time and we got to workshop the scenes and play around with them a lot and find different things in, in, um, in them every rehearsal. And uh, yeah, it was an invaluable um, asset to, to, be able to, um, to be able to rehearse and, and, and really just form that bond between Lola and I, but also between Lola and I and Dave, because it's all, um, you know, uh, based on, on trust between the three of us. So, yeah, that was something that was um, definitely the most valuable, um, I guess, training. In terms of physical training, I did um, absolutely nothing um, because uh, Eddie isn't particularly athletic, so that wasn't um, too much of a reach. The most challenging aspect was... Um, Oh, the most challenging aspect. I think, I think the most challenging aspect was probably um, that uh, maybe the maybe the most challenging aspect was self-imposed. It was it was pressure that was self-imposed, and um, I think maybe sometimes it can be a challenge when you feel a lot of responsibility and you're and you're telling. A story and you only get one chance to do that and and so maybe the the biggest challenge was not getting in my own way a little bit and and I am um, not uh, overthinking and, and letting kind of my you know not being my own worst enemy I think that was maybe the biggest challenge um but um I think lots of actors would would say that that sometimes they feel like they have a bit of imposter syndrome and I think that's natural I think everyone has that um to a certain degree um, but yeah, that was probably the biggest challenge. But then also, um, you know, Lola and I were so close and, and she's my best friend in the world. And um, and she was so brilliant at any time I'd let any kind of thought like that creep into my head. It would uh, go out just as quick as she was there to um, yeah, push any of those negative thoughts away. I think that I'm... I think it's, you know, I, I don't think the roles I'm gravitating towards now are necessarily very different to what I was gravitating towards um, a few years ago even. I, I, I think that, uh, you know, I just, uh, I, I've been so lucky to work on things that I really care about and feel strongly about and, um, and characters that I'm, I'm passionate about and I, I think they're still the, the type of things that I gravitate towards. I don't think that's changed. I think that, um, yeah, I just get that feeling. Um, and and um, I, I suppose I can't really explain it, but I, I I usually know right away. And so they're really the characters that I'm I'm gravitating uh, towards, are just um, ones that I really care about. Um, yeah. I think that horror is is a genre that I I've never um, experienced and. Um, you know, I look at someone like Ari Aster, who's a complete genius, and I think he's incredible, and I would kill to be in, in, in one of his films, or or even just to get to talk to him. I'd, I'd, I'd kill to, you know, be able to talk to him even, because I think he's 
so incredible. And I think, um, yeah, I think the horror genre is one that I've, I've never done and I'd be really interested to do. I, I think it looks like a whole different side of filmmaking and one that I've never experienced. So, um, yeah, I'd really love that. And, and yeah, particularly um, Ari Aster. I think he's uh, really, really brilliant and uh, Midsummer and Hereditary. Are, um, yeah, I love them so much. I think there's, I think that Eddie in Dating Amber is probably the character I relate to the most and, and partly down to I got to bring so much of myself to that character. Um, uh, uh, you know, I, th I think that both Lola and I got to bring so much of ourselves to those characters and our own friendship to the film that um, there's so much of me that was able to bleed into the film, which is, is something that's really exciting. And um, yeah, so I'd say Eddie in Dating Amber is the character that... Um, that's most like me. Or maybe if there was a hybrid of Ned from Handsome Devil and Eddie from Dating Amber, that would be, yeah, that would be the one that's most uh, like me. They were amazing. I, they're such incredible filmmakers and um, I was just in awe watching them them work. And, um, you know, every day, I'd, I, I find this on every set, but particularly that set, I would just learn something new every single day and I'm so grateful for that opportunity um, yeah they're absolutely incredible and um, yeah I, I was pinching myself uh, every day working on on that set. I think that I took, well, that's a good question, what should I take away from being on the Cherry set? Um, I mean I literally took uh, things uh, because we were allowed to uh, take whatever we wanted. But I think I um, I think that what I took away was just that I, I think just I was I was just really grateful for the opportunity. I, I think that I, I walked away from that set being like, God, I'm so lucky to have been able to do that. And and there's um, lots of people who'd um, who'd love to uh, do that. And, and, and I was lucky enough to be given that opportunity. So I think what I took away from it was just um, gratitude. I think it was that. I think it was just that I was really, really delighted to be um, to be given that opportunity. And you know, even from before I got cast, even the thought of um, of um, Joe and Anthony watching my tape, I, you know, my self tape that I'd made, even just them watching it blew my mind. So um, yeah, I just felt incredibly lucky to 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 have been given that opportunity. I think that my method for inhabiting a character, um, I, I, see, I, I feel like it changes from, from role to role and I, I have no one way of doing something and I, I wish there was one way of, of doing something where I'm like, that's the perfect way of doing it and it equals a, a good performance, but I don't think that exists. I think you need to treat every job completely differently and, and I certainly do that um, the way I prepared for uh, Dating Amber is entirely different to the way I prepared for normal people and, and normal people to cherry. So I think that, um, yeah, I have no one way of, of, of doing it. I, I, I think that I approach everything so differently. And even if in my mind I'm like, oh, well, I was happy with that performance, so maybe I'll approach this this way, I just don't find um, it works like that. Uh, I think one thing that probably does stay one constant is um, I like uh, music being a big part of, of preparation, regardless of how I prepare. So I think that um, having a soundtrack to a character, even if it's not necessarily the soundtrack that makes it into the film, which it usually isn't, um, yeah, having a soundtrack to a character is something I find uh, really useful. Oh God, um, I think my five-year goal is to just keep doing what I'm doing. I, 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 um, yeah, I feel really lucky to, to have been given all the opportunities I've, I've given and to work on things that I um, really love. And um, yeah, so in five years time, if I could um, be sitting down and saying that I've been able to continue to work on stuff that I really care about, I think I'd be really, really delighted. And that's, yeah, that would be a, a dream come true. So yeah, I guess my five-year plan is to keep doing what I'm doing, but that's not a very exciting answer. But anyway, that, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, just keep keep doing what I'm doing and, and work on things that I uh, really care about.